Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel through space? Just to see a glimpse of our Earth from the heavens above? This guy has Sir Richard Branson of Virgin Galactic. And with the first phase of construction in southern New Mexico nearing completion, that dream will soon become a reality with Spaceport America. With big names like Lady Gaga preparing to launch into space, flights into orbit are all the new rave for the wealthy, the rich, and the famous. But what does this mean for the rest of us who can afford trips in the orbital space? While many locals strongly believe Spaceport America will bring jobs, tourism, and much needed sustenance to the area, the cost of construction may be straining. As a new age of space approaches us, New Mexico's race for space is far from over. We recently attended a Spaceport America conference to get the inside scoop on what locals think and what it takes to make Spaceport America happen. We were surprised to find so many different vendors from around the nation, the small pieces that make up the big picture. accessible to a whole new range of people. So what you can conceive of can be tried. Right now, uh, maybe in a few years you can try. No, no, no. Now with suborbital, daily kind of flights, weekly kind of flights, you can try almost anything. And a good example, um, they talk about space tourism in Virgin Galactic, $225,000 flight. Uh, not too many people can do that, but they do have more people signed up for that right now than have ever been to space. Only 570 people have ever been to space. They've got 625 who have already paid big money to get in line to be a part of the launch shots for Virgin Galactic. x -Core's seat cost is $95,000. If you want to run a, an experiment, there's a rack right behind the seat for $19,000 you can do an experiment in the same microgravity or zero gravity that as soon as it lands you can take that experiment out and deal with it and then you can do another one next time it flies so that's a whole different paradigm of how you can do work well i'm excited about virgin galactic because they're the closest ones to making things happen here in new mexico but the whole industry is fascinating and everybody's got a different approach and a different idea and at some point and hopefully the near future it'll all come together and We'll all be up in space frequently. Uh, Moog was started in the early 1950s. Bill Moog uh, uh, worked at the Cornell Aeronautic Labs. He invented the electrohydraulic servo valve. He uh, started his own little company. Uh, the company grew from servo valves into servo actuation, servo control systems. And uh, today we, uh, we're the lead the integrator for all of the flight control systems on the new Boeing 787 aircraft. Um, we do complete control systems for, for rockets now. Um, when the shuttle used to go up and uh, turn and sort of lay over and, and turn sideways there, uh, that was all mold actuation to move the nozzles on those rockets. And that's our heritage. Uh, future plans, we've been uh, growing steadily uh, across all of those different markets. Um, we're up to, I forget, it's something like 50-some locations in 27 countries, something like that. Um, uh, so a very international company and we just uh, try and stay on the forefront of uh, motion control technology and uh, control systems. While all this is exciting, I was eager to find out how this could be beneficial. What you're really doing this to do, some tourism, is x only carries a pilot and one passenger. They want to do research, because there's a whole world of research that you can do in zero gravity. 
So materials, biosciences, life sciences, there's things that we don't know how they can be produced in microgravity or zero gravity conditions. And right now, it costs a thousand times more than what it'll cost you to do it this way. Plus, sometimes it takes you years to get on a flight anyway. So we're actually looking at a flight a week and sometime in the future, a flight every day. So whether you be a passenger or a research thing, this is to make space frequent and affordable. So it's point A to point B, I'm sorry, point A to point A, so you go up and come back to the same point. Within about maybe five to eight years, we might be doing short point A to point B. So it might be Spaceport Colorado to Spaceport America. It's going to be a while yet before we start going from Spaceport anything to the other side of the planet. But that is coming. That is coming. The Norosphere, the MLT, you really want to be able to schedule the time that you sample and you want to be able to have it always referenced to the same point on the Earth. A great deal of our weather and climate, and even a great deal of what goes on in the controversial global warming hypothesis begins and occurs here in the MLT. We can get data as much as four times a day, ultimately, exactly the same place over the Earth each time using suborbital research techniques, doing the sampling, measurement of energy levels and uh, ions, atoms, and so on. What is the composition? What is the energetic level of the various parts of this layer that are almost completely un unknown huh? because we haven't been able to get there and sample in a scientific method. So this is a whole new area of research that can only be done this way and will be done at a tenth or a hundredth of the cost of doing the sound of rockets. I mean, it's 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 something that uh, probably a younger generation has kind of grown up with that idea. is more is more familiar, more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people from my generation are a lot older. This is this is still a little bit more like sci tech, you know, science science fiction kind of thing, you know. But it, but it really is a reality. And and the reason that I, that I'm here is that in my field uh, where I'm working that I work in now. Um, career technical education, I'm concerned to ensure that the programs that we're providing for students in the school are aligned to the potential for future jobs that this kind of industry can bring to us. And since we have a spaceport, Spaceport America here locally, uh, within 50 miles of the school where I work, uh, I think that we really need to pay attention to what's, what ha what's happening with this industry. And what are all the peripheral industries and accompanying jobs that will that will come with that? Because if you grow that kind of an environment here, that kind of commercial environment of space travel, I can see tourism, I can see high tech jobs, I can see all kinds of things potentially appearing on the horizon. And so we need to ensure that our students have the necessary background to apply for that kind of job. That I think Virgin Galactic's on the right path. Uh, they need some help on a couple of different areas from the state and the, and the nation, but uh, their concept is good, their idea is great, and their, their, uh, their, their spaceship is wonderful, so I'm just ready for it to happen. The idea of orbital travel is definitely an exciting new venture, full of possibilities for research and exploration. And whether New Mexico's financial issues continue to strain construction or not, a new age of space looms over us. An amazing age where space travel will be an everyday thing will be made possible with Spaceport America.